Skeptics and doubters have often said that the Bible is a collection of myths and legends. That the writers of the, of the scriptures just basically took existing, existing stories uh, from ancient past and made them into the idea of the Bible. Uh, well, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't raised up in a Christian family. Uh, I didn't know the Bible. I didn't believe the Bible. Uh, and when I went to university, I was largely an agnostic. I know these arguments because I've often used them myself before I became a Christian. So I know the arguments, uh, but knowing the truth and knowing the research, you can realize that um, these things have um, a question that needs to be answered by Christians. Movies like Zeitgeist, Aronofsky's Noah, uh, books by Sir James Frazier like The Golden Bough or Noah's Flood uh, have made this idea of mainstream in society, the idea that the Bible took stories from ancient myths and legends and made them into what we call today the scriptures. They all conclude that there are so many parallels between the Bible and this account, especially books like the, the Ark Before Noah, that the Bible is really uh, a nonsensical book. It's basically a collection of myths and legends. Example, the creation narrative and the flood narratives we find in ancient civilizations like uh, the Sumerians had a story, Epic of Gilgamesh, of a flood narrative. We know stories from King Manu from India, uh, or the Aztec stories, or the Greek mythology of Pandora's box. These are legends and myths who parallel the ideas of flood and creation found in the scriptures. As Christians, how do we answer this? Is the Bible really a collection of myths and legends that have been collected and put in a book form, uh, passed down through ancient cultures and civilizations? Well, let's answer the question this way. We know all people lived in the area of Mesopotamia at one point. Archaeologists have proved this, that people lived together at one point. The ancient uh, civilizations and humanity all uh, arose from the Fertile Crescent, the area what we call today uh, between the Euphrates and the Tigris River. The family that this originated from, all people came from Noah's family, Noah's three sons. The idea of creation, the idea of the flood narratives, those were common knowledge in ancient civilizations. They all knew that the stories or these accounts happened. The true events were common knowledge to people. However, because of sin, idolatry, and superstition, all those true events became mixed with those things and therefore became corrupted over time and therefore arose the idea of these myths and legends. Uh, these true events were corrupted with superstition and paganism, and therefore uh, what was once a true knowledge of the events became mixed in together. Now, the Hebrews had the most theological and the most historically correct record uh, of those accounts because of their relationship with God and the revelation of God through His Word uh, called the Torah, God gave the most accurate and theologically correct revelation of what really happened. But let's look at these pagan myths and let's look at the Bible, at the biblical account of those records. Juridical portions of Moses, the juridical portions of the scripture written by Moses, have extreme parallels with Hammurabi's code written in uh, cuneiform uh, in the 17, 1700 B.C. They see the many, many parallel forms. But how did these help the pagans? How did the revelation of God help the Hebrews if they were so parallel? But let's look at this. The Hebrews had a higher standard of social justice, education, and health due to the revelation of God to them. Every Jew had to read the Torah, had to learn how to read. Every Jew had to learn how to count in order to practice his faith. Many of these myths and legends... Uh, were only available to the nobility, to the aristocracy, and to the priesthood. The common people in the pagan world did not have access or understanding of these myths and legends. But let's keep going on this. Let's understand the diseases. Diseases in the ancient world was a real thing, was a real problem. Before the age of microbiology and epidemiology, the Jews regulated blood, uh, seminal emission, uh, menstrual blood, oozing, human waste. They regulated because that was the command that God gave them through his revelation. The pagans had none of this. They dealt with 
epidemics, death, because of their lack of health due to the fact that the, their ancient myths and legends did not help them in any way. Only the Jews had this standard. Let's look at dietary laws. In the ancient world, before food processing and refrigeration, the idea of eating shellfish and pork in the ancient Middle East desert was a formula for botulism and trigonosis, which they are for sure resulting of death. The pagans dealt with this and had tremendous diseases. The Jews did not have those because they were regulated. Their dietary loss was very regulated, and they had none of those things. Look at social justice. Pagan nations often have been notorious for slavery, notorious for human oppression, notorious for the suppression of women, the Jews did not have slavery. They had indenturism, they had bond servantship, uh, which was willful servanthood, and at the year of Jubilee, they were free, they were set free. Women had rights, Gentile had rights, kids had rights, even animals had rights. Look at the fruit of the revelation of God, what it brought to the Hebrew ancient world, and look at the fruit of the pagan myths and legends and what it brought to that world. Idolatry, superstition, social injustice, and suppression. Why didn't these myths and legends help them? Why didn't those myths and legends raise the standard of living like the Hebrew people did through the revelation of God? But even more, Judaism developed and evolved, especially during the intertestamental period and the second temple period given rise to Christianity. What has ever good, whatever good has ever come out of those mystery religions of Babylon or Osiris or Egypt or the cult of the dead? None. The Bible is very clear on its authorship and inspiration. The God inspired these men to write exactly what God wanted to bring about as a revelation of himself to the world. These ancient myths and legends were written hundreds and hundreds of years after those so-called events happened. We don't know the authorship, and these events are so far removed from the original event to, to when it was written down that there's no way to prove any of this. Only the revelation of God has brought a higher standard of living, social justice, freedom, health, education, and ultimately, as a Christian, the way of salvation through the Jewish God in the person of Jesus the Messiah. I would take the Bible above any of these pagan myths and legends. No, the Bible did not get them from those ancient legends and myths. Those events, those true events in the Bible uh, happened. Those events were real. It was the pagan ideas and myths and legends who corrupted them over time because of sin and idolatry. The Bible stands true, as it always has, as the Word of God. Thank you for listening. God bless. Thank you.